Hi, I'm Craig Styers, Associate Vice President for IDC Asia Pacific. We've recently completed a study of the big data and analytics maturity of organizations across the region. Some of the results may be relevant to your organization, especially if you're looking for ways to drive better business opportunities. A growing body of research shows that organizations that act on good intelligence outperform their peers. Today, we'll look at what kinds of initiatives are making this possible and how you can determine your position relative to your peers. When we discuss big data and analytics roadmaps with our clients, we use the discussion board shown here. This is a high-level view of how data from machines, phones, servers, and people all gets created and pulled together. It shows some of the advances in infrastructure, which are driving down costs and other barriers to implementation. It then covers a number of the tools and applications available to organizations for the business analysts, stripping away many of the technical skills requirements. On the far right, it finishes with the ways that people will use that information as part of the business process to drive real value. Let's talk about what the leaders are doing and where you can expect your peers to be investing, if they haven't already. Customer engagement initiatives are topping the charts of projects now underway. We see a number of traditional projects that are being redefined with the insights generated from big data analytics. Another huge area of interest is in geolocation data. This opens very interesting opportunities for retailers to send offers based on time and location. It also creates opportunities across many industries to use geofencing for route adjustments, asset tracking, or to improve safety. Finally, the innovations happening in machine-to-machine -machine communication is threatening to disrupt a lot of manual processes. Although many of the funded initiatives today are in smart cities, check back with us in a bit later in the year when we explore the full potential of the Internet of Things. Now where are we seeing the majority of these projects? From a high level, we can split the region into the majority of projects typically undertaken in each country. For now, the leading countries are Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and New Zealand. And to be clear, even the most mature countries are sitting about halfway up the scale of the IDC Big Data and Analytics Maturity Model. This five-level scale ranges from ad hoc to optimized and is useful for organizations to consider the next projects they should consider investing in. Now, Korea, China, Taiwan, and India follow in maturity and are generally midstream contenders. Still, a lot of innovation is coming from these and all of the countries in the starters category, so you can expect some healthy competition coming from across the region. It's worth looking at what, e what has made each of these categories achieve differing levels of maturity. The hyper-competitive landscape in these countries is a major driver. With some industries being dominated by large players and some industries having a completely saturated consumer base, the need to engage customers in a more personal way is needed to stay relevant. Another very important driver is the role of government. These governments have generally led the region in setting clear and stable regulations around data privacy and fair use. This has given organizations more confidence to invest in big data initiatives without the fear of suddenly being in breach at a later date. Another important factor is the prior use of analytics. This strongly affects the culture of organization and lends itself to having a much richer talent pool for these more challenging analytics projects. Now the midstream holds the two most populous nations in the region and globally, making for some pretty unique opportunities and challenges. China and India have experienced urbanization on a tremendous scale. This has placed a lot of people onto urban infrastructure introducing massive amounts of data into systems, and with them, ways to engage all of these people for the first time. Where the other countries in this group fit, Korea and Taiwan, is they are very much impacted by the economic, industrial, and demographic shifts of their neighbors. A limited set of organizations in these countries have undertaken more advanced initiatives, and questions remain as to how long it will take for the average organization to step up. Finally, we look at the big data starters. As you can see, these are countries across ASEAN. While each country has a very unique and complex ecosystem, there are some common themes that have made adoption slow. 
Limitations in physical infrastructure is a major factor in many of these countries, with high-speed internet, 4G networks, unlimited power, in-country cloud, and advanced technical universities being in very short supply. This has created some very real constraints on organizations looking to scale up and out with their big data vision. Most of these countries are currently undergoing political upheaval, or at least uncertainty. This makes for very low reliability of government funding for projects, investments, and infrastructure improvements. The volatility has deep reaching impacts, which breaks many parts of the supply chain, making recovery slow. We do see some spots of brightness in each of these countries, with some organizations getting first mover advantage by weathering through obstacles and finding creative solutions. Now I'd like to leave you with our essential guidance on how to make the most of your big data and analytics investments. Be selective. We strongly advise our clients to first take the IDC Big Data Maturity Assessment and see what issues they may need to address before launching a new initiative. Once that assessment is done, we recommend starting with a customer engagement initiative. Acquiring new customers or keeping your existing ones is always an important focus area. Second, agree on measurable business outcomes. This sounds obvious and sounds a lot easier than it often is. The metrics that you choose must be aligned to the needs of the sponsors and it must be impacted by the new initiative. Finally, lead with intent. Our maturity model identifies five dimensions for organizations to get right. Intent, people, process, technology, and of course, data. Of these, only intent can't be fixed with money. Getting the right internal alignment, sponsors, and commitment will be a key to your upcoming success. Thanks for watching, and feel free to send me comments or questions on my Twitter handle, Craig IDC.